you know, if you could start maybe getting the money in sometime, uh, you know, soon. I need it all in by the 15th. So if you could, those uh, that are going, if you can't go and you want to sponsor somebody, now you don't have to sponsor the, you know, the whole thing. You can sponsor a bus trip, you can sponsor half a bus trip, you can sponsor a room or half a room. Uh, but if you wanted to do that, uh, just make it up to Jug County Right to Life. GCRTL. If you can't remember that, make it out to the church and put a bus trip on the check, and we'll we'll make sure it gets to where it's going. Uh, what other announcements do we have? Oh, yeah, yeah. This is kind of a flow of ways off. How many of you came to that last conference? We had All Life Matters conference. That was a very, very good conference. There was a lot of information put out. Uh, we're going to have another uh, have a heart fundraiser. And this is basically is going to be, in, uh, we're going to be participating with the Joe County Tea Party in this. Uh, this is to get our boots on the ground. We're running some candidates that are Tea Party candidates. Uh, and so, of course, you know, Matt Lynch is one of them. He is, we're running him for Congress. Uh, Janet Porter, you know, Jan, she's running for this 22nd District Senate in Ohio. She's going down to Columbus. Boy, this is going to be interesting when she gets there. She's a little fighter. Mary Pat Eisner from out here. Uh, she is running for our Central Party com uh, Committee state. And then we're going to have Bev Goldstein who's running also for Congress and Dan Hermata for Act for America. He's going to give you some updates on the jihadist training camps in this country. People, I wish people could wake up. They're here. We have several in Ohio. These are Obama's uh, Jihadists, they're training all across the country now. So, folks, they're not training to make peace, okay? They're not training to make happy with you. They really aren't. And so, you really need to know. Hosea 4 6, my people are destroyed for. That's right. You really need to know what's going on to take us. Okay, we don't hate Muslims. We much would rather convert them than kill them, right? Right. But we're not going to stand by and let them kill us. Kill our children. That's right. And uh, that's that's what jihad is all about. Amen? Right. Amen. So, with that, I'm going to get into our message today. And the title of the message is Dumb Dogs, Dull of Hearing, and the Why Did the Sepulchre. So, and we're going to be starting today. Hey, Pastor. Peter, chapter 4. Pastor. Yes. You might want to start over. I don't think I got the title on that. Okay, whenever you're ready. Okay, now you're. Okay. Good morning. We're coming to you from Doers of the Word Baptist Church at 14781. That's 14781 Sperry Road in Newbury, Ohio. Zip code is 44065. I'm Pastor Ernie Sanders. And you're listening to us this morning on the Eagle, that is the Liberty Works Radio Network, at uh, 104.3 FM, the Eagle in Tampa and Ocala. The title of the message this morning again is Dumb Dogs, the Dull of Hearing, and the Whited Sepulchers. Now, I've never known a time in all of my life when there have been such fear and apprehension amongst the body of Christ, the church, as there is today. There was sense of abomination, the, the dark prince, the man of great, great sin, rose to power. The status of America has continued to decline. When I was a young man, people for the most part felt that there was something very special about being an American. America was the envy of the whole world. The greatest nation that ever existed. America was above all nations, truly blessed of God. America was the wealthiest, the most powerful, the most generous. And above all else, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. America, until recent years, was the greatest predator nation that the world had ever known. After World War II, America <coughs> helped enemies and allies. <coughs> On our dollar bill, the words, in God we trust, were believed and honored by most of us. We enjoyed the privileges of living in the freest nation on earth. America was good. America was healthy. America was clean and great. America today is sick, wounded, bleeding, 
combined. What has brought the greatest nation that the world has ever known to its knees? It wasn't from any foreign power, no great nuclear nation, no, not at all. It was from within. And in 1 Peter, we start today in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 16. If any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. And we need to be considered an honor to be found worthy. And folks, if, if you are a Christian, for real, if Jesus said, if you abide in him and he abides in you, the world will hate you. That's right. And if you are a Christian, the world will know it. And the world, you're not going to be getting along very well with the world. And I can honestly say I don't get along very well with this world. But the time is come that judgment has begun at the house of God. If it first begin with us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Well, folks, judgment has already been begin with the house of God. Uh, judgment and confessions, judgment and chastisement. Uh, the church is being judged for its apathy and its ignorance, but also the church for those that are bold, those people that are that really truly hold to the Word of God, that that through their faith stand up and they stand out and they run to the battle. They don't run and, and hide. Yep. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? That should send a shiver down the legs of everybody who is a professing Christian and is not an activist. Uh, Chris Matthews said Obama sent shivers down his leg. But folks, I'm going to tell you this. And he says this, And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? You really need to dwell and think on that. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit to the keeping of their souls to Him in well-doing as unto a faithful Creator. The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not by not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. The point that he's making there, the pastors are one to lead their people, or to do it boldly. Okay? And not to, not to try to be rulers, but to lead by example. Right. The pastors, you know, the shepherd, look, the shepherd doesn't get behind, it goes out in front of it. She crosses over the deep water and looks in the guards, and that's what pastors are supposed to do today. Not for money's sake, not right. for what we have out there today with all of these prosperity preachers uh, who continue to tell you that, that God just wants you to have all of these material things, and yet all of these material things that you're hearing them that Rick Warren tells you that you want Joel Osteen. These are all the things that Jesus and the apostles rejected, folks. That's right. Now think about that. Okay? Amen. No, the, the real gifts are the ones that last forever. The greatest gift anyone could ever receive is eternal life. Amen. Amen. And so, I wanted you to go over to 2 Thessalonians. In 2 Thessalonians, Chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. Which is manifest token of the righteousness, the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you also suffer. Seeing it is a righteous thing that God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you, and to you who are troubled, rest with us. And the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, and a flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
who will be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. And he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all of them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Let me tell you something. These pastors today are supposed to be bold enough. They're not supposed to be looking for a place to hold up or for a, uh, a plushy little pulpit to hold up. They're supposed to, and again, I've had, I don't know how many times I've had prissy preachers tell me, you know, I'm just not comfortable with doing that. I'm just not comfortable. You're not supposed to be comfortable. No. And that's what I tell you. Can you show me any place in Scripture? No. Does it say here that we're supposed to be comfortable? No. We're supposed to do it. You're supposed to have faith. Listen, what I just read will come to pass. Everything that God's Word, the Bible, teaches comes to pass, folks. Amen. Yes. Amen. Right? Yes. And you, you better be ready for it. Bring it if, if anything, I have written on my tombstone, it would be, He loved the Lord with all of His heart. And he taught his people. He told the yep. people. Amen. Amen. The time will come when nothing else out there is going to matter to you. Yep. Nothing it. else. It's not going to matter what kind of car you're driving, what kind of home you have. It's not going to matter you know, how healthy or how unhealthy you are. The only thing that's going to matter is you're standing with the Lord Jesus. You're going to be able to say, <laughs> when he shall come to be glorified in the saints and to be admired in all them that believe... <laughs> Because our testimony among you was believed. It better be believed. Because it'll either be believed, you'll either know it, and you'll either be a doer of the word, not just to hear it deceiving yourself, or you will wish you had. That will happen. That will. There's no chance that won't happen. So, what, what made America, what made us a great nation, was our faith in our Creator. Turn to Psalms chapter 33. In Psalms chapter 33, I just want to read you just one verse. Psalm chapter 33, verse 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Let me read that again. Two nations that were founded, one nation under God, Israel and the United States. That's right. The only two nations. We were founded. <coughs> On our dollar bill, it has in God we trust. Uh, we used to. One nation under God. That's the way we were. How many of you think that our freedom is worth fighting for? How many of you think that, that being a one nation under God, restoring our nation, is worth dying for? Yes. Amen. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. It is. If you go over... Psalm chapter 9, verses 16 and 17, you'll see what brought our what brought our nation down. What has brought America down. In verses in nine, chapter 9, Psalm 9, verse 16. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. There it is. The wicked yes. shall be turned into hell. And all the nations that forget God. Europe. Folks, yeah, well, you take a look at Europe today. And we're not far behind. And then, Scripture says, Woe unto those pastors that are dumb dogs, too afraid to bark. Isaiah 56. Verse 15. Isaiah 56 in the... Verses 9 through 12. All ye beasts of the field come devour, yes. All ye beasts of the forest. I heard some people on the radio were talking the other day. They've been having all kinds of strange things been happening around the country. One of the things we talked about last week, people have been hearing trumpets blast. Yep. They've been hearing the sound. Of, you heard that too? Yep. The sound of trumpets and they can't figure out where is this coming from. Okay. But some of the other things that have been happening is that animals have been turning on people. And, uh, yeah. and so here he says this, All ye beasts of the field come to devour, yes, all ye beasts in the forest. 
His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. It's referring to the pastors. That's what it's referring to, the pastors, folks. Yea, they are greedy dogs but can never have enough. That's what the, the prosperity church is all about. Everything has to do with money. And guess what? They can never get enough money. They can never, they can never. They always want a dollar more. Mm -hmm. They are greedy dogs which can never get enough money. They are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, every one for his gain from his quarter. Come you, say they, I will fetch wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink. And tomorrow shall be as this day, and much more fun. Well, you know, if you've ever been a part of that new charismatic movement, uh, they <laughs> they do imbibe in their alcohol, too. Uh, this, the, the movement out there is it's all about pleasure. It's all about feelings, and uh, it's about some very, very strange things, too. You see, in 1962, God was expelled from the public school system. How many of you remember that? Because the preachers were asleep. Yep. <clears throat> the preachers should have marched on Washington, D.C. Yes. No place is our Lord, no place is our Lord been more dishonored and disobeyed and it's from the pulpits of what's supposed to be true. Supposed to, yes, sir. 1973, Roe v. Wade. When that unclean court declared themselves to be God, when they said, what God has made unlawful, we will declare legal by license. In other words, you can transgress the dominion of God. We will now, if you will purchase a license with mammon, we will give you the permission to destroy the image of God. Well, that court was supreme only, as we say here, in their sin and their rebellion, they have got no, no authority at all. They've got some power. Just like every other criminal has power when they pull out a gun and stick it in your face. They've got no authority. They have dishonored God. They have blasphemed God. They have committed high treason to God, to the country, and to all of us. Right. And then, last year, 2005, the denigrating and sodomizing of the first divine institution of marriage and the family, when that unclean court declared that sodomy, that you could have what they call same-sex marriage, which God's Word the Bible declared, which is set in law, to be an abomination in His sight. Oh, right, the same sense of abomination. Absolutely. It's called fornication. What they call marriage, he calls fornication and an abomination. That's right. Now, folks, you know, I get it. You know, I often tell you, we talk about, they talk about the three levels of government. There's four levels. People keep forgetting. Mm. That fourth level is we the people. Amen. You see, the other three answer to us. Right, right. You should. We're the ones that pay them, and they're the ones that have been stealing from us. Yeah, exactly. Amen. And so we, we need to take our nation back, one nation under God, indivisible. Mm -hmm. From Genesis to Revelation, I will remind you over and over, resistance to tyranny is obedience to God. Amen. Failure to resist tyranny is always disobedience. Starting with Noah, going with Shiphrah or Pua. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Daniel, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, all the way through. All you have to do if you just want to go over and, and read Hebrews chapter 13, it, it sums it all up. The heroes of the faith. They obeyed God and not a corrupt government. And we have to do the same thing. We're running out of time. Amen. Mm -hmm. There are young people in this country who have never known America the way so many of us have known it. They never knew her in her greatness. They never knew her when she was a creditor nation. They never knew it when there was it was clean. Mm. They never knew America when you weren't afraid to have your children sit in front of the TV set. Wow. Right. Because you didn't know what was going to be on there. They never knew Can't America that we knew. Okay. Turn to Ezekiel chapter 34. And Ezekiel chapter 34. Now, today you're going to hear from 
these false teachers often today you have. Uh, especially when I was growing up, there were those that were telling people that the priests and the, and the false teachers, that, well, the, the Bible is kind of too complicated. It's just uh, uh, too complicated for you lay people to understand. Nope. Uh, you, you, you can trust the clergy. You can trust the priests and the pastors. No, uh, no, no, no. They know how to uh, explain it to you. So don't, don't read it. But God's Word, the Bible says exactly the opposite of that, huh? Right. Amen. Study to show yourself a proof. And we read over here, starting with verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves, and should not the shepherds feed the flocks. He's referring to the Word of God. He's referring to giving them the understanding and teaching them and feeding them the Word of God. The laws. The diseased have you not strengthened, neither have you healed that which was sick, neither have you bound up that which was broken, neither have you brought again that which was driven away, neither have you sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have you ruled over them. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yes, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth. And none did search or seek after them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely, because my flock became a prey and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, there was no shepherd, and neither did my shepherds search for my flock. But the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. The beasts of the field are talking about the Antichrist system, the world, the one world government system that we have going into place. Those are the beasts of the field he's referring to. Yeah. Therefore, all you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, and I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may be meat for them. And then, uh, you know, when I was a young preacher, I heard these words over and over again. If you keep this up, if you keep this up, you're going to bring the government down on all of us. I'm going to bring the government down on all of us. You see, when I was a young preacher, I couldn't understand why the older folks didn't have more courage. I couldn't understand why they weren't marching on Washington, D.C. back in 62, and why they didn't put that unclean court on trial for treason against God. I couldn't understand why they didn't have the courage in 1973 to do the same thing when they passed Roe v. Wade. And I would preach out against this, and... A number of them would come to me and they would say to me, you know, some, in fact, a couple older ones, you're right. And I don't want to, one of my mentors told me, I don't want to take away any of your zeal because everything you're saying is true. But you can't be too hard on them because if you are, someday they're going to need you to lead them. And they won't follow you if you're too hard on them. So my answer was, do you think I want a bunch of cowards following me? They just get me killed. <laughs> and one time when I had gone to an ordination, I went to the ordination of this fellow, and when I walked in the door, there was a big hall, and there was tables. And, I, and it was very noisy when I got, I got there a little late. I got there right at lunchtime when everybody was eating. And, and when I walked in, it got quiet. You could have heard as I was walking through there. And as I walked past one of the tables, I heard one whisper, That's him. So guess what that means? Guess who they were talking about? They were talking about, yes, that radical preacher, right? And so I sat down there at a table by myself in the middle, and some great big <coughs> then preacher come over, and he said, You mind if I join you? I said, No, have a seat. And then he said this, he said, it's good to eat with a real man. Yeah. And he said, uh, he pastored a church out there in Willoughby, a Baptist church, unregistered. Okay? All right. 
And so, uh, you know, and I, and I ran into some of those preachers later, the ones who, normally they wouldn't say it to me direct. But their people would come up and say, my pastor says that if you keep this up, you're going to bring the government down on all of us. Oh, well. Exactly. You see, during the war for independence, the Revolutionary War, it was the pastors that led it. Right. You know why they understood? They understood that resistance to tyranny was obedience to God. Amen. If you don't have a faith that's worth fighting for, and you don't have a faith that's worth dying for, I can tell you one thing. That faith isn't going to get you to heaven. Nope. It's not real. Well, I want, I want to read something. I had a, oh, here it is. This is a book from Jay Menifee. I was with Jay back years ago, back in the 70s. We started something called Northeast Ohio Roundtable. Today it's called Ohio Roundtable. Oh, yeah. But Jay wrote this book. It says, Dear Pastor, <coughs> only you can rescue America. I just want to read you from page 90. And on page 90, we start out, he said, Russian communism, which eliminated private property and promised jobs for all, fell after about 70 years when they began to exhaust the nation's physical accents. In much the same way, our America way of life built on biblical teaching is beginning to fall because of our neglect in teaching each generation the love of God and all that He has commanded. With each generation we drift farther and farther from knowing biblically the difference between good and evil. We are losing a biblical worldview, but we are losing biblical conscience. The pastors allowed God to be thrown out of the public school. They allowed the communists to come in. When God left, that door was left open and the other guy came in. Mm, and he's yep. been there ever since. And Martin Luther saw that coming. Martin Luther, all the way back in the 1500s, made a, a statement. And that was, unless God's word, the Bible, rang paramount in public <coughs> education, they would become nothing less than great gates of hell. And that is what's happening in our public school system. Today, more and more, uh, they're promoting... Islam, Communist Corps, they call it Common Corps. They're pushing Islam in all of the public schools. They're pushing what they call unisex bathrooms. They're pushing, they're teaching how to, what they call sex ed education is nothing more than how to courses on fornication. He goes on to say this, we are becoming a nation that knows not God, what he has done for our country. For nearly three generations we have been secularizing our consciences. We're very close as a nation to, know, to not know biblically what is evil from what is good. Young people are opting for cohabitation instead of marriage. And the fastest growing institution is single parent families. This and many other trends show that we are near losing the asset of our consciousness. If a person's conscience has decayed into secular beliefs. He will not be open to evangelism. He will believe he has no need of Christ's offer of salvation. Charles Finney, the great evangelist and president of Oberlin College, what? He would be pretty disgusted if he saw Oberlin College the way it is today, wouldn't he? Terrible. Saw the coming as early as 1873. He prophetically stated, <coughs> In the last paragraph of a sermon titled, The Decay of Conscience. If there is a decay of conscience, the pulpit is responsible for it. If the public press lacks moral discernment, the pulpit is responsible for it. If the church is degenerate and worldly, the pulpit is responsible for it. If the world loses its interest in Christianity, the pulpit is responsible for it. If Satan rules in our halls of legislation, the pulpit is responsible for it. If our politics become so corrupt that the very foundation of our government are ready to fall away, the pulpit is responsible for it. Mm -hmm. God's Word puts it far more forcefully and far more personally. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. I will also reject you from being my priest. Since you have forgotten the law of your God, I will... Forget your children, Hosea 4, 6. 
we are also warned, Woe to those that call evil good and good evil, who substitute darkness for light, light for darkness, who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and clever in their own sight. Therefore, as a tongue of fire consumes stubble, and dry grass collapses into the flames, so their root will become like rock, and their blossom blown away as dust. For they have rejected the law of the Lord of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. On this account, the anger of the Lord was burned against his people, and he has stretched out his hand against them and struck them down. In 2011, Dr. Erwin Lutzer, pastor of Moody Bible Church, was quoted in a newsletter as saying that we have already crossed the line and lost any chance of restoration. I do not believe that, Pastor. We can still restore our nation if we start right now. God spared Nineveh, and if we cry out to God and change their ways, He will surely spare us. As a matter of fact, He has promised us exactly that. If my people who were called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Second Chronicles 7, 14. You're all familiar with that. So, Pastor, even though many have been praying for America for more than 30 years, we have yet to turn from our wicked ways. We continue doing the same things. I want you to turn over <coughs> to Hebrews <coughs> chapter 5. good deal of the blame. It started with the pastors, but it doesn't always belong to the pastors. A good deal of what he tells you right here. This warning, this is one of five warnings given in Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 5, starting with verse 11. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you Again, which be the first principles of oracles of God. And there become such as have need of milk and not of strong drink. For every one that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Yep. For he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full of age, even those by who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern good and evil. I, I just had someone tell me, uh, you are, uh, you're a good preacher, uh, and your messages are strong, but they're a little bit over the head of a lot of people. But you see, they're, n they're not supposed to be. A lot of those people who should have been teaching the Bible by now, and uh, some of you in here, right. who should have been teaching the Bible by now, are still under the milk of the Word. Let me tell you again, I don't know, how can I say it? Uh, the time will come, it will come, when none of that other, all of that other stuff that you keep yourself occupied is not going to matter worth the hill of beans to you. It won't! What I'm reading you today, what I'm preaching today, will be what will matter to you. That will happen! There is no chance at all, none at all, that that won't happen. God's got a pretty, pretty accurate... Reputation here of being accurate, of always doing what he says, when he says, how he says, where he says, he gets it done. Amen? Amen. Amen. Is there anybody in here that doesn't understand that? Well, you see, this is this passage of scripture, folks. There's not one <coughs> of us in here that knows more than we should or could know more. That includes me. That knows that knows this Bible well enough. There's not one of us. And, and i got to tell you, my, that's what my, my job as a shepherd is to tell you. You need to spend more time, and that includes every one of us pastors in here, and less time on other things. And then, I want you to go over to Matthew chapter 23. You see, God is very, very long-suffering, but boy, he's not slack concerning judgment. He's not. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 23, I want to start in verse 13. And here, as we go through here, 
he has eight woes. Eight woes he gives. Now, by the way, uh, these people, the scribes and the Pharisees, uh, they're the lawyers and the judges. They're the judicial. And, and just like in today, in those days, they had a very corrupt judicial. And the Lord Jesus, he's bringing them to task. Now today, you know, sometimes you think that that my preaching is strong in what they call inflammatory rhetoric. Listen to what the Lord had to say here. That's right. He gives you eight woes. And he refers to them as children of hell, uh, as hypocrites, as whited sepulchers, and vipers. These are not nice names. Right? Verse 13. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For neither you go in yourselves, neither suffer you them that are entering to go in. What do they do? They try to keep them from the gospel. Mm. Well, I'm going to tell you, there's a special hot place in hell. There's a special hot place in hell. Listen to what he says. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour a widow's houses, and for a, a pretense make long prayer. Therefore you shall receive the greater damnation. Do you notice what? He uses the word damnation, not condemnation, but damnation, which is a stronger term. And when he says that, that means the punishment is going to be greater. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cut the sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, you make him two for more, the child of hell than yourselves. Do you understand? You see, when God tells you this, it's one thing, it's one thing when a man accuses you of this, but when God says that, you know you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Woe unto you blind guides which, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple it is nothing, but whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple he is a debtor. Verse 23, Woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay the tithe of mint and anus and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law of judgment. Mercy, faith, those ought to be, you have to, done, and not to leave the others undone. I remember being in a 501c3 church, and uh, they had their board of directors, everything had, they had their constitution. They were much more concerned, and especially when it came to the purse. And I remember at that time, uh, even though the pastor at that church was a, a good godly man, and he didn't care for the 501c3 at all when he came to pastor that church. But I remember one day as I was standing out, uh, I was a I taught Bible there to the 8th grade boys, and here came these two people into the lobby, these, these two women. And I'm going to tell you, the girl was the skinniest person I'd ever seen up until, up until Big Jim, when Jim was in the hospital. Jim... Jim's the skinniest I've ever saw. He went down to 40 pounds. But uh, this girl was the, the skinniest person I'd ever seen walking. Okay? And she came in there, and they were, her and her mother, and they were looking for some food. They needed a place to stay. The grandmother was, was they were only giving her a couple of days left, and they came from out of state, and they were staying. And the <coughs> Catholic Church had put them up in a hotel, giving them a couple of days. Uh, but the mother had, was still alive, still hanging in there. And that they wanted to know if there was some way we could put them up. So I went in and I uh, I told these deacons, they, they were just having a deacon meeting right there that day at that church. And I went into the deacon meeting. And I told them, I said, we have uh, these two folks out here. And they kind of need some help. And right away... They wanted to know, well, you don't know these people. What if they're drug dealers? What if, uh, you know, we don't know. You know, we have a building fund. We have this. I said, oh, wait a minute. I said, are you a church? Are we a church here or not? Are we to, to feed the hungry? I got a little bit. I, I kind of lost it. And, uh, and all these uh, old-timers sitting around the table, I think they, they, they kind of thought I was maybe just a, a little off balance to begin with. Okay. <laughs> Because, uh, you know, I'm a radical, uh, flaming Baptist. But anyhow, I said, are we a church or not? 
Do we feed the hungry? Or do we house the homeless? You fellas better tell me. I need to know right here and now. And there was a whole bunch of red faces. Uh, but guess what? They were out there with cash and helping. And, and I took uh, this mother and her daughter out uh, to eat. And uh, the girl hadn't eaten in so long. She, she started out real slow. She could barely barely put the food down because wow. she, you know. But anyhow, they put her up, they put them up, and they were there, and, and uh, we bought them, we provided the food as you're supposed to, Amen. you see. We're to feed the hungry, house the homeless, clothe the naked, visit those that are in prison. That's what we do here at this church. We do all of those things here. Amen. Because that's what God's Word, the Bible says. See, we're an actual church. We're not a corporation. And he, here's what he was talking about these, this Judaism here, these Judaizers. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you may clean the outside of the cup and, and of the platter, but within are full of extortion and excess. O blind Pharisees, cleanse first that which is within the cup and the platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Mm. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead man's bones and of all uncleanness. Well, I'm going to tell you, that's a perfect description of our judicial system today. It is bad. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. Well then, I want you to take a look over, because... Today we have the world, the National Council of Churches, these that are called liberal churches out there today. I remind you that remember, they were the ones that were running the ads for abomination, this man of great, great sin was running, this man of darkness, and they called themselves, uh, they were talking about how, he, running commercials about how he was such a good, godly family man. And they called themselves the Matthew 25 Coalition. The Matthew 25 Coalition. And they were making a mockery out of Christianity. They were playing off the stupidity of the church because they figured people aren't going to know we're, we're mocking them. And so I decided to let people know what the Matthew 25 Coalition was. What Matthew 25 said about those that failed. You see, uh, liberalism and socialism today uh, doesn't work very well once you run out of other people's money. Hmm. And what happens with with conservatism and the Christian ethic <coughs> is we are to take care of the hungry, the needy. With the with the liberalism is that they will use other people's <coughs> money, other people's money, not their own. Mm -hmm. And they, they so. And that's what he says in Matthew 25, and he describes those, because they said, we are the religious left, and the Lord would describe those on the left as those that would be bound <coughs> and cast into the fire. The religious left is the enemies of God, and if they're God's enemies, they're our enemies. Right. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, starting with verse 12, we read this. But what I do, that will I do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, that we may be found even as we. The Apostle Paul is making a point. The point is this, that these, these are these apostate preachers, and they're saying, you know, we're just like Paul and Peter and the others. We're, we're uh, pastors too, <coughs> except for they're not. They're apostate. They embrace today the liberals. They, they embrace sodomy. They embrace abortion. They embrace everything that God's Word, the Bible, calls a sin. And by the way, the Bible makes it very, very clear. Women are not to be ordained ministers. Amen. And yet, more and more, the United Church of the Antichrist, uh, and by the way, just about all of those United Church of the Antichrist have daycare centers yeah. you know, where they can make children available to sodomites, to pedophiles. Yeah. And the Episcopal, the other apostate churches, actually had a witch! actually had a witch as the head of the church. And so, this is, this is again, they are the enemy of the cross. They're the enemy of Christ. <coughs> Scripture says in James 4, 4, what? It makes it very, very clear that 
that those that the enemies of God, if you are friends of the world. Folks, if you get along with the world, that the friends of the world are the enemies of God. Right. Amen. And we have to understand something that things are changing. And one way, you're either going to go with the Lord or you wish you had. That's the way it's going to work out. You can't be a little bit saved. There's no one who can be a little bit saved. It's like being a little bit pregnant or a little bit alive. You either are, you are. Amen. 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 In that verse in Peter, it makes it very clear that you really do want to be. He goes on and he says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, <coughs> transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. <coughs> then I want to end by going to Jonah today. And in Jonah, folks, chapter 3, and Nineveh was a very, very, very wicked place. I mean, an extremely wicked place in those days. And in fact, uh, it was founded by Nimrod and just filled with every kind of pagan worship. They worshiped the fertility god, the 